Hi everyone, it is Lauren. I am here. I don't know if anyone else is here. I wanted to make sure it got on on time. I am waiting for our star, <laughs> Miss B. Sue. She will be out in just a minute. Today we are going to be talking about filigrees and two in particular and they are great for making bracelet cuffs. And so Bisu is going to show us different ways today that we can manipulate these filigrees findings into a beautiful jewelry cuff, both with color and with different jewelry tools. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Dara. You're always my first here, girls. <laughs> we'll be starting the, the video shortly. And hopefully the video today, we won't have technical issues with the being in and out. Um, I don't know what the weather is like, but... I know in different places they've been getting snow. We had snow. It's extremely cold here right now in Ohio. Um, it's been in the low teens and single digits the past couple days. So very bundled up, as you can imagine. <laughs> hey, Karen. And Elise, hello. Beans. Wow. <laughs> Hello. Did Debbie drag your butt? <laughs> so as I said, we're waiting for our star, Miss B. Sue. She's putting the finishing touches on herself. Hi, Maria. It's nice to have you guys already here. I'm sorry you just have to listen to me yammer for the moment. <laughs> but I will show you while you guys are waiting. These are the two cuffs and they are in the raw brass. We're working with raw brass. Hey, Deborah. So these are the two filigrees that we're going to be showing you guys today. So we have this lovely tapered end one Again, perfect for the wrist when you manipulate it. It makes a great cuff. And then another one, which some of you have used before. I don't know if anyone here that's already on, um, let me know. But we have the Bohemian filigree. I've used this piece myself. Um, in the past, but not specifically as a cuff. So that is that part is new for me because I have used it as um, a focal for a centerpiece on a necklace. But you can use it either way if you wanted to use it for a necklace. But people also like to use it as a cuff. So this is the other one. We just got these back in. You may have seen Bisu's post on the group. So those are the two that we're working with today that she's going to show you. Oh, you guys are too sweet. <laughs> yes, yes, there is some heavy stuff here, as I said, with tools. Um, cold, okay, so we'll see. Hopefully the weather doesn't play anything in messing up the video because like we've told you guys before, we really can't do anything on our end. Um, because our Wi-Fi is good. It's it's not our Wi-Fi. So whether it's YouTube or whether there's just shortages going because of weather, wind, anything like that with the in and out. So hopefully we don't have that issue today with the video, as I said. Um, I'm going to try not to move the camera as much, if, if at all possible, and try to keep it as steady and, you know, in place as I can. Because um, I don't know if maybe that is a factor, but... So yeah, we have, she has an anvil here. Um, she has different pliers. Um, 
She has the mallet, as you saw. We have coloring agents. So, yeah, it, it should be quite a messy and, and loud video today. <laughs> and there... Maybe you could make us some of my head's not cut off. Yeah, there is our lovely... Oh, I know about lovely. This has been a morning, guys. <laughs> but I can always count on Lauren to fill in for me for a little bit. That's... That's the one thing. She's very glib. You know what glib is, Lauren? Yeah, very good at ad libbing. Yeah, you're just good. flying you're off the quick. cuff. You're quick. I gotta put this coffee on, guys. <laughs> Hi, I'm mom. Nice. Uh oh, mom's spying on us. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> okay. But, oh, this one. It reminds you of a hot air balloon. Yeah, but oh, it, I see it that. Yeah, I see a that. Bit of the shape. I love that. That's based on an old check piece. Yeah, I was showing them the you two. You can really see that. I was showing know? them the two pieces that we were mainly yeah, working with today. Yeah, well, so. I gotta put my glasses on. Hopefully, today my hair stays out of my eyes. It probably will because I should have washed it, and I didn't on purpose because I might not do that. The other day, man, it was I don't know how big it's getting. Watch me. I went back and I watched the, the replay, and I'm like, oh, Lord, geez, you should have went. You should have. You should have went ahead and. Uh, Put your headband on. I'm trying to get away from headbands. Yeah. You know, so Be, there she is. There she is. Here I am. Yes, there. Oh, please. <laughs> okay, let's see. We got, is that, the gonna, be, is that the beginning of it? No, we got a bunch of people today. Oh, I want to say hello to everyone. Okay, so, so we have Debbie. On. We have Dara. Karen. Beans is already here. Beansy baby. Uh, Terry Gates. Um, Annalise. Oh, wow, great. Uh, Maria. Maria Danko, so, hello. Debra. Uh, Debra, Karen Gale. Yep. Uh, um, did you pass somebody? No, Pro, Pro mom. Gates, oh, and there's Sarah Andrea. Sarah Gates. Jet's girl as mom. Yep, and Let's then Andrea. See. And Just Andrea that. Skinner. Well, we got a good bunch here we sitting do. here waiting on me. Well, I tell you, I'm not too considerate. But I, tell, I think I tell you, I think I tell you what happened this morning. You give me a little slack. Um... This morning, my keyboard came from Sweetwater. And if any of you guys follow me on Facebook, I think most of you do, you may have seen the post about my old George Foe's piano and what happened to it. So I've not had any keys. I've not had no keys in this house for a few years. And at first I didn't miss it because I'm busy with this after all, you know. It takes most of the creativity I've got, you know, but I would different times be listening to something on the radio or on TV or something. I'm like, I wonder what key that's in. And I go running out to go to my piano to figure it out, and it's not there. And I was just starting to really miss it. Now, I'm not a great, you know, player, but I love music theory. I'm a student of music theory. I never forgot it. I took it formally, and I never forgot all of it. I would still like to learn more of it, and that's you know how most music is put together. I like to take a piece of sheet music and just look over it to look over it, see how they put those chords together. Now, if you're not into that, you don't know anything about that. This is boring what I'm telling you. But anyway, I want to explain to you, Dave, why I got a keyboard, and then they said it was not coming until next week. So I thought I got plenty of time to get ready for it. She calls up yesterday, it's coming on a pallet tomorrow morning. And I'm like, oh. so Jordan gets to work. He does not start my car to get her away from the back door and won't start. Because it's so cold out. Probably. probably. And I hadn't driven it for about a week because so I don't go nowhere. You know, so anyway, uh, finally they came. It was on a pallet. He brought it all in. He's got it all put in all over the place in, in the living room. <laughs> We got to take it apart later, and he says we have to open up the keyboard and we have to try every key to make sure it works good. We have to plug in the amp, make sure it works good, and all that. And then we have to save all the boxes for a while just in case something happens. Yeah, send it back. But I know I'm gonna love it. So anyway, you got to forgive me. That's what happened. I did not plan on that. I did so good yesterday getting planned because we got to do this video today, and then right after it, Diane and I do the Friday video, which she takes home. And, and she, renders. And she renders it. Yeah, know? that'll so be on Friday. I've got that all put together. And that's going to be based on the necklace I've been showing on Facebook, the one that's on a crescent that I've been working on. Um, so you'll get to see that one, which I believe I'm going to keep. And then I work on another one that's going to be mostly white pearl, Miriam Haskell pearls, 
and cut crystal and it's, it's coming out beautiful but I want to say kind that of bridal I'm kind of maybe sort of yeah it's With the just crystal in the white you know white cells I you know guys you know that how white white and crystal cells I don't care if it's a bride or but not. I mean bright bright frosty white do like winter weddings well that's true but people I mean anytime I have had a white mix like that white mix we had the yeah. other week boom it was gone in an hour you know, I've already pre-sold another whole batch. Well, crystal does yeah. go with anything too. You can. It does, it, but it, it's it just, just it's just dresses it, it up. It, anything. It's lighthearted. It's pretty. You mm -hmm. know, it's like oh, you know, it makes anybody who's older like me feel young. It does. It does. So anyway, so I, I made, started this one, got everything lined up, so Diane can I just can just go from this segue right into that, get that knocked out for today. Then I gotta make goodie bags for y'all because everybody who orders from yesterday, Tuesday, mm -hmm. on through next Monday, orders thirty five and up, are gonna get goodie bags. And two of them are going to have a twenty five dollar gift certificate shopping pass in. So. If it's your week to order, if it's not, don't worry, because you know I do this from time to time, so don't sweat. So this coming Monday or the following? It started yesterday, mm -hmm. and it goes to the end of this week, and then it's Monday, too. That's usually how I've okay. done it. And then next Just Tuesday will sure be another cycle. So, okay. <clears throat> so anyway, so yeah, uh, you know, you got a chance to win in one of those. So I'm going to down in there, you know. And it's going to be all random. I won't even know who's winning it, you know, just so you guys got to look for your, through your little bag and see if you find your note. You know, so, so it's gonna be a little love note, as we call them. Love notes. You know, I've done love, love notes. No, you me. haven't done one in a while. No. So there's gonna be two real special love notes in there to look for. Um, and also, real quick, since I'm on that subject, we have two new codes. One is ten off fifty and twenty five off a hundred. We'll check for sure, and I'll put it in the description of the video. Um, but if you go to my website, they're already entered for the week. They're going sliding across on that on the banner bar. So you never have to worry about forgetting a code. Whatever the current code is will be in there. So you can take advantage of it. Okay, today, put my glasses on so it gets official. All right. Hi, Barbara. Today, we are doing manipulated filigree cuffs. Let me see. I'm gonna look see who's here because same, just Barbara, Barbara and team. So I wanted okay. to say hi to her. I'm gonna scroll back a little bit and see who I was again because I forgot it. Okay, some of you guys yes, <laughs> um, know how to do this already because it's not like the first time I ever did it, but I've done it over 13 years of videos, so I can't even remember the last time I did it. So I just kind of thought, well. I think it's about time to do it again. So we're gonna manipulate filigree. I gotta reach in here and get a bottle of water. You want a bottle of water, Lauren? I'm good, thank you though. You guys want a bottle of water? <laughs> I get so dry when I'm talking. I think it's this medicine I take. It's like sometimes I just feel like I can't get the words out. My everything's pasted together in there. Do you guys think I sound like Roseanne Barr? I used to get that like. Lauren screwing her face up like, what? You know, I used to get that a lot years ago. You sound just like Roseanne. Okay, I guess maybe I did. <laughs> anyway, um, but here the last couple of days, I get people seeing it again. Oh. And I'm like, I thought we were done with that. But I'm, you know, hey, if it entertains you, fine. Just watch the video. I'm delighted you're here. You go ahead and think that whatever you want. I'd rather not sound like her. Maybe I need to start practicing scales again or something. Um, but anyway, yeah, I thought that was kind of unique. But I am so delighted how many people are showing up lately. This yeah. is so great. And Heidi just calm. caught on, by the way. Heidi! Hey, Heidi, how you doing? Um, everybody, too, remember before I start into this, please, please, please leave me a comment. Please, and a please, like. please like me. If you're not subscribed, subscribed yet, please and also, do that and ring the bell because yes. then YouTube will let you know when I'm on. That's if you're subscribed. You have to if be subscribed. If you're subscribed and you tick the bell icon, there, it'll give you a notification. It will notify you when I'm on. You yep. know, so on your screen, so you know it won't be obtrusive. It's down in the bottom, like. But anyway, so 
Uh, you might want to do that, but please, please leave me a comment because those comments are working. We are getting mm -hmm. boosted a little tiny bit. I'm seeing a difference. I'm seeing new people. And I'm so, so grateful because only you guys can do that. I can't do that. YouTube wants to know what you think. So if you're leaving me nice comments and I, I'm coming up and rank and it's being seen a little bit better, so that's a good thing. So Terry says that she hasn't made one in a few years, so a review lesson is is in order. Okay. And uh, Annalise says no. No what? You do not sound like I. I you try it. No. <laughs> people used to say it when I was younger all the time, and I would sit and I'd listen and say, "Well, yeah, maybe a little bit," you know. But never anything I. Like, Hi, Betty. And then... Anyway, but anyways. Betty just got on, and Heidi says that she just got an order last week. It was the matte black, and she can't wait to play. Oh, I didn't know you'd put in one. Well, thank you, Heidi. I appreciate that. Yeah, we got more matte black showing up here real quick, too. Anybody want coffee? I'm going to grab mine real quick. Lauren doesn't drink coffee. No, I do not. I'm a hot chocolate girl. Today, and I don't know if Andrea's on here, but she might be working Andrea Schubert. She's the Starbucks girl. She works there. No, she's not on yet. Well, she might be working. But anyway, uh, she turned me on to Veranda Blonde, and that's what I'm drinking today, in case anybody wants to know. Hi, Joanne. Is that our Joanne? Yes, it is. She was just here, you know that? Oh, was she? Did she I pick said, up her order? should stay and get on. She's like, no, I think I'll do that another time. <laughs> <laughs> she came out still in my pajamas. This was my... I'm just racing around today. Transfer guys. essence. Um, Glad to catch a lie. Oh, I that's Brenda. She... Right. Her Brenda. name, remember we asked last week and her name was Brenda too. Yeah, but the last name. It'll come to me. I know you. I know you. Yeah. I'm sure I know most all of you. Oh, yeah. Very few of I've known Joanne since I was little tiny. Her and her, me and her son Andrew were born on the exact same day and we actually went to school together for a while. Andrew used to come over and play with Jordan. And he always used to come in and say, Brenda, don't you got any cookies? My mom always has cookies. Well, I'm not a real good cookie baker, but if you like Andrew, since you're going to be here in a little while, I'll go see if I can make you some. Oh, he'd be so thrilled. <laughs> he ate them, too. Those are good cookies. Okay, then. Um, so anyway, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to be working with this piece. I don't know if you can mm, see Yep, them. I showed them yeah. before. We're going to be working on this, which is, which this is a cuff flat. Which that one's pretty easy to manipulate, it's, too. Yeah, mm. pretty much. But there's, oh, I got paint all over my arm. That, well, that's, oh, and, and on my nails. See, that's why I didn't do my nails, because I got my hands in paint, so yeah. forget it. Um, we'll paint your nails during the video. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I painted one paint. Yes, um, here, let me hold that up. I'm going to try to, I told them, I'm going to try not to move the camera as much as possible today to see if that has any uh, helping with the going in and out. Oh, it yeah, move, because, oh, then things. I want to mention that, too, with the in and out thing that we have been having the last few weeks. Um, when I go back to the play, playback, it is not there, and if it had been okay. cutting out, I would see that. So I don't know if it's maybe your Internet service provider or if it's a YouTube thing in some parts of the country. And also, could definitely, somebody mentioned, could be weather. Yeah, I mentioned weather because earlier. Because we definitely got some other situations going on. So if it starts doing that for you, just hang in there. Yeah. Because I can't fix it, sadly. But it does come back around, and I'm not seeing it anywhere in the replay. So So she did a really pretty, like, pinky coral salmon color. Yeah. And that's actually this one. This is a... I don't even know if you could buy this. And it's a Ranger product. It's a Ren, uh, Diana Wakely. Dina it's Wakely. just acrylic paint. Dina Wakely Media Acrylic Paint Rouge. I don't even know. I think I got it in the clearance. I'm always a sucker and for then, this color. This is just <clears throat> the actual piece itself, or did you put another gold over top? I put the Crocodile Tears Wait, Solar that's, Paste. That's the gold? The gold came through and I distressed it, but when I put this over it, mm -hmm. it kind of mellowed it. Oh, it, it didn't okay. look like I like scraped it off at all. It just kind of melted and made it kind of satiny, more satinier than it had been. I didn't do it on this one yet, but I did it on the big one. Okay, so I, can, I, I can see the difference. I don't um, know if you guys can, but I'm going to try to bring yeah, it Yeah, so the solar one, paste has got its place. It's, it's a little shinier in this one. It's really, it's really, really talks on the darker colors. 
I'm trying to get it without it blurry. But yeah, this one I can tell. But it's, it's got its place, you know. It's mm -hmm. yeah, it is softer. I can so tell the I, I distressed it first by just when this was wet, I just took it and went like this and it lifted it. You know, I didn't use like anything scratchy, still wool or nothing. You don't need to do that with paint. A lot of times you can just get it off with a piece of paper towel. You know. But here's the thing about this piece, besides making it into a cuff, I'll just mention this before I go cut it up, is you might notice, and you have to zero in on this okay. one I'll for them to be able, be able to be able to I'm going to try to do this as smoothly as possible. No, it's not bad. You're not doing bad. <laughs> she loves my hair. It, looks, it's, it needed washed, Heidi. But when I was on Instagram <clears throat> on Monday, I had just washed it. And it was so fly away. It was in my eyes, and I was <laughs> stuck right here in my glasses. This is driving me nuts. And I just, when I saw the replay of it, I'm like, oh, this is terrible. I made people endure that. So now it's, it's tacked in place. Anyway, so if you see here, guys, you see this little ridge right through the middle? Do you see that? Okay, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so we and can see. It's going to cut off your face a little bit, but I'm going to try to get care. the piece itself so we can. Okay. There, you see that little beaded, like raised thing in the middle there? That is, thank you, Betty. So what you can do, and I'm not gonna do it now because it'll wreck it, but you can bend this thing in half and you can manipulate it apart by just bending it back and forth. Doesn't mean this is not a sturdy piece, you're abusing it basically, so that's what will happen. And <clears throat> you get it apart. And then you can use this bottom piece as necklace focal, which I think lately Miss Dara did that on one of the pieces I put in one of the more recent newsletters. If you're still listening, Dara, you could comment on that. Yes, Beans, it's raw brass. This, yeah. So this These is... Are raw, yeah. We'll show you. This is the original. Yeah. And then this is the new one. Right. And by the way, if you're work with raw brass... You wash this... Yeah, I degreased Soap it. Soap water? Yeah, I degreased it really well and dried it with a towel and let it dry. The rest of the way, air, air dry. So um, you got to be sure you do that if you want the paint to take hold right. And I just, they use an awful lot of machine grease. I think it's Cressoline grease they use on the machinery to get the, the, the dyes to stamp. And it leaves residue on things. So you got to get that off. But it's easily done. That's the good thing. It's easily, easily done. Hi, so, Colleen. So anyway, hey, Colleen. Sarah so, says that she did. She did. Yeah, she did. So she used this piece. But she did not use it as a cuff. She took the bottom part. And it made an excellent, excellent next focal. And you know what else I'm thinking, too? <clears throat> did any of you guys see uh, how Rebecca Sharp wrote? Uh, manipulated filigree around her Peruvian opal on the group the other week. I think I put that in the newsletter a couple weeks too. Well, she did. And the Peruvian opal was a teardrop shape, beautiful stone, not something we carry, something from her collection of stones. <clears throat> but she took a piece kind of rather shaped like that and she bent it around the opal and she used the tip and she drilled through it so she could hang it was spectacular. So this is not the exact piece she used. That's on order. It should be coming pretty soon. And then we'll talk about that more. But anyway, I digress. Yeah, because I was saying this one to them earlier. I've used this piece in the past, mm -hmm. but it was always as a necklace, like as a focal centerpiece for a necklace. I never used it for I the cuff. mostly use it as a cuff. And see, I... <laughs> and oh. I have it for a while, but um, Linda Barnett who's a customer, I think she's on the group. Um, I don't know if she's watching this, if she does, if she is, hey, Melinda. But she sent me some pictures of some things that she had done with this as a cuff. And I had a smile all over the place because she had used necklace bars on the end and lots of jade coming out and says, oh geez, I did that. You know, you know, great minds run alike, I guess, or common use of a product, I don't know, whatever. I didn't do exactly like she did. She put crazy good color all over it. She started with a black one, I think. She had a black one we did. So, um, and then she did the, it was outrageous. So just watch your filigrees, you know. 
think outside the box. You know, you don't have to use them just like they look like, oh, well, this is what you do with that. But you can. But think a little harder and you'll get something super Could you super put it maybe unique. on like a leather cuff? Why not? And like embellish it and like Why not? use that to embellish just like a plain leather yeah, you probably, band? Yeah, you probably want to find, if you're going to put leather on it, you probably want to find a way to uh, rivet it to the leather. Because the glue the would be messy. Even, and well, no, you can do it, but the leather glues, um, when it comes to manipulated brass and the leather, they will hold for a while. I'm fine. Not, right. They don't fold. They don't hold. I haven't found one that holds good enough to suit me. So, uh, I usually think if it's just a little tiny piece of filigree, a little, mm -hmm. you can probably glue it on there and you'll be all right. Because I like the whole. If, if it's gonna be like going around your mm -hmm. wrist, you, you're gonna have I to. I like put the whole hard soft. Strategic, yeah. You have to put some strategic mm -hmm. um, rivets in there, probably. Beans, okay, wait, was it beans? Um, yeah, beans wanted to know, do you file it a little bit? You can. I I didn't file it. Dara them. said that she did. Yeah, it's a little, you know, it's a little rough to the tub can hurt. What you do is before you start anything, after you rinse it and get it cleaned up, go get your zero, 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 four zeros and a, and a four. Quadruple, uh, no, yeah, quadruple, just four zeros. It, in old fashioned, they called it quadruple odd. An ought was an O. Um, steel wool. In other words, super fine. And just... Go around the edge. It takes the rough edge right off. I have a video about it. If you go back, I think people, a lot of people have watched it too. It's so easy to soften up stuff like that. Or you can use one of those great big fat emery boards like you get from the salon. Those were good. I was just um, filing down the edges a little bit of the blank I'm going to use to make my necklace. Yeah, Dara said she used an emery board. Yeah, yeah, and it softens it right up, and it's nice. So, Hi, Mary! So anyway, how about, what do you say, let's bend one of these deals. All right, let's okay. do it. So, can you train your camera Yeah, down so that they can see it, because I can't do it by holding it up. Yep. And then I'll try to come out as far as I can to, right, oh, so maybe, I, maybe I don't need to. Okay. Oh, uh, maybe I don't. You can, you can leave it back. Just leave it that back by me? Yeah, that's good. Because okay. I can zoom in. Okay. So, I don't want to put this straight down on the countertop because it might scratch it. So, I'm not going to do it. I don't need to. But you do need, like, a hard surface under you to work with. Okay. So, I'm going to start in the middle. And right here where it starts to get round, I'm just going to kind of start pressing down and up. Yes, Millie. She's bending it, yeah. She's mad because you're standing in front of her food. Oh, she got in. I saw her. Her food's right down. Yeah, it's down near my That's feet. a small kitchen, guys. I have to take advantage of every space. You can see I've, I've started to bend and see it's rocking. Uh -huh. Oh, me, baby. Okay. Mom she, says she loves the color, by the way. Yeah, me too. Me too. So, you just, you know, from those pads right there. Start to make your arc. Then you'll move up to here and start. You got to be very gentle though because you don't want to like crack it in the middle. It's not that. Would it give, would it, give it a crease too if you bent like too much? Like it, it can, yeah. and it can make it funky looking. You yeah. like you want to get a nice round look to it. So you got to be a little so like if you want it to flow. The, right. the now they have those base bracelet bender tools too, which I used to carry. Them. I haven't for a while because people didn't seem to really want work anyways. You got it. Hi, Melba. Use your arms. So see, look at that, what's doing already. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. and it's getting nice and round. It's not, you know, funky and creased or anything like that. Although I've had that happen. You can get it out, but that's why you go slow and easy because that way you'll see Just it happening. You'll see it happening before it gets Gradually too bad. move your fingers up. Right. A little Just inch at a time. Just rock it a little bit. Move them up. No, but just so do you use tools with this one or strictly your hands? I just use my hands. Okay. There are tools for this. Like I'm saying, you know, there's some big professional ones too, but like the only reason I would ever use those is if I had a line and I had to make like hundreds of these, and yeah, I'm not going to use my hands, but if I'm going to make one or two here and there, what do I need that for? 
spend that money. Yeah, use your hands. Is there a specific wrist size that this is? You good make for? it to fit. This is, I will tell you the measurement on this though. It's about five inches across. And it's about two and a half up and down. So that gives you an idea. So see, now I'm getting this bent, so I'm gonna. So you can see how that's gonna go on my wrist, kinda. It's still sticking out too much, but can you see how it's starting to flow? Mm -hmm. That is never gonna go all the way around, because I have like medium large wrists, maybe seven and a half, going on eight, because I'm pudgy. Um, so, and I'm not especially small bone either. I'm short, but I'm not especially small bone. Like Lauren, Lauren's tiny. I'm very tiny. I have baby wrists. Yeah, not me. Okay, Terry wants to know, does it help to warm it first with your hands? I don't see where it hurt, but I don't see where it's really going to make that much difference. You know, I would say it would help if it's room temperature, you know, but, um. Uh, yeah, like, and you, like, okay, I know, like, with brass, like, if you want to fold brass or bend it or do things like that, a lot of times they'll do what they call annealing, which you'll run the torch over it first, and then you can ma manipulate it better, but you're not going to be doing what I'm doing right after you use a torch, are you? No. You'll burn yourself, right? Yeah. So, you know, you can stop that action by just throwing it in a... a dish of water and it'll get cold right away but then you're back to square one so i don't know if you think it's better do it i just haven't found that it was necessary i'm going slow with this because i want you guys to see plus you know it takes a few minutes but it's not like i'm gonna take y'all afternoon so i mean like that not hard we're on, we're almost there already This one's going to go a little bit more than that. you got to get both sides to match up. And the reason it also takes a little bit longer is because it's a bigger piece. Mm -hmm. It's still not this taking one, that long. The little one won't take that long. It's still, it's still no. adjusting easier it's, than it's I thought. It's getting there. You with know. just your hands. Alright. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check it and I'm going to see right along in here you know is it nice and rounded or is it herky-jerky somehow you know <laughs> like i don't want to be bent more on one side excuse me than on the other right ah you know love me i get to head that in my songless ah you know love me baby <laughs> so even when you get to the point where you're trying to get the ends to go around, you still just use your hands? Yeah, I only use my hands. Now, here's another little tip that might have worked out good too, and I didn't go there. You don't have to do this. If you get this bent really good, you really don't have to do it. But some people like to really make sure that the cuff is ultra secure and that it stays on the wrist exactly where they want it to be. So to do that, you're gonna to wanna to put a small length of chain and a lobster claw, claw clasp, and it won't, I mean small, it'll probably be like an inch, inch and a half, if you wanna do it. So if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do that, then you would need to drill Should it out. It. You need to drill it out first. And I, I have the whole punch pliers here. We carry these at the site, and there's a whole nice big video on how to use your hole punch too on my channel just look for it like just go up into the search box and put hole punch and it'll come up and you'll enjoy that because it'll show you one two three this is how you do it this is how we do it okay so you know you'll get it right that half that way okay Okay, now I don't care. I won't do that too hard because it'll, uh, you know, it'll get. You want it to be like nice, soft arc to it. You don't want it to be, you know, like creased. Creased would be a good way to say. It. 
make sure that you so I'm just about there just work a little bit more but you got to be careful at this point because you don't want to get it out of kilter or stress this middle seam so I would probably bend it more toward the middle now than trying to push the end tabs back And you don't need a lot of power to do this, because believe me, I'm weak as a kitten. It's like kneading bread. <laughs> yeah, well, I can do that. But I'm not super strong. I've just got my tricks. I can, op I, like, I can open just about any jar. The most stubbornest, the most stubborn jar ever. Can't get it open, nobody. You're passing all around, can't get this one? No, no, no. I got ways. I always find ways to compensate. I'll open that sucker and looky. How did you do that? Mm -hmm. the, they, I, I started it for you. Yeah. <laughs> no, you didn't. Woman power. Okay, it's about there, guys. So you can see, you know, it doesn't take that long. And then the more you do it, the, the less time it takes even still. But yeah, that's, that's got a nice arc to it. It's, it's, nice, it's not um, creased looking. That's about right. I would, probably, I would probably do a little tiny bit more <laughs> toward the middle. And then, yeah. Yeah, this one's far enough apart. I probably, on my wrist, because my wrist is a little bit bigger, I might want to drill this side, this side, and I could run a safety chain across. But if you get it fitting you really good, um, and it stays on, you know, you don't need to. I've made them where I didn't. Oh, goodness. Okay, so that's how you do it. Any questions? Let me look and see. I used to bend them around can You could do that, but here's what I found. Around can is sometimes too round because your wrist, when you look at it, that is rather round, but your wrist is oval, isn't it? So sometimes it can, it can would be a good way to start it to me, but I would finish it by pressing my, that's me. If you got it to work that way and you liked it, then you're fine. That's just me, that's, that's what I think. Um, so again? So, Let's see, no herky-jerky here. <laughs> Those are all Yeah. The only thing is I found, like, I <clears throat> used my hole punch on this one. Let me see. I can show you that better. I had to really work it to get it to go. I mean, I had to use my little uh, anvil and uh, something sharp to go through it and a mallet. And it took me a while. It would have been a lot easier for me to just run downstairs and put it under drill press and hit it, but... Um, I got a smaller hole this way, I think, so I like that better. But and just use it. Some things, she, some she things with that. the yes, the um, hole punch, man, it goes through. As long as you make that pilot hole first, your little ding, you ding it first with even something as simple as now. Best thing to use would be a center punch, which they don't cost much. They're a good tool to have. We usually have some at the site um, if you need one. But if you don't, in lieu of that. A nail works also. This is what I use. This is my go to tool for like 35 years. It's a Stanley Awl. Yeah, here it is. This is, this is Stanley 69 122 USA. His name is Stanley. Okay. No, Stanley Tools. <laughs> That's the brand. Yeah. If you know tools at all, you know Stanley Tools. Okay, I'm just so being goofy. <laughs> I bought this in a hardware store somewhere thinking like, oh, I see, I can make holes with that. Really, and all is more to like, well, you can do that, but ream stuff out and things. So, anyway, so what I did is I took, you and I have this little tiny anvil that I have. We have them at the site, but you, you know what? But a bench block's better, a steel bench block. I think we have those too. But I had this up here. You so. need some stress relief. Like, <laughs> yeah, so what I did, well, maybe I'll just do another one to show you. I decided 
and that the best place to put my hole on this is right here. Can you click okay. on that? Yep. One second. Sean? Give me just a second, guys, because I want to try to make this smooth. Yeah. Right here. Flat chair. Let me get up a little bit. Right in there. There's a little tiny depression. you got to look for that. And I kind of figured that would be the best place. <clears throat> now, I started pounding it on this anvil, but you know, this is rounded, so this doesn't work too good. So I had to do it on a countertop, but I've got paper towel underneath me, so I didn't damage anything, thank goodness. But anyway, so I stuck it <clears throat> so I'll show them right in one. there to make my pie. So right there, guys. If you can see it right there. And then where this is a kitchen going. mallet. I'm sure you guys have seen kitchen mallets. So it's right underneath that other, oh wait, no, that's the one that you did. I'll show them when I get right? done. Yeah, that's the one I oh, did. Oh, that's the one that you did. Okay, so there's where the little hole is. Yeah, right. Right underneath that little three hole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we so, go. So here's the kitchen mallet. Oh no, she's breaking out the mallet. I was too lazy to go get a hammer. A regular hammer. This. Going with the big guns. This, is, this looks like one of those old antique primitives, doesn't it? It's like, or in the court. This thing is... <laughs> About 50 years old. Um, I bought it not long after I got married. Uh-oh. And I <coughs> I drove every nail. <laughs> this, this is my nail. I drove every nail. How she kept on in line. Mostly it's a tenderizer. But anyway, it will work for this too. So here. Now you got to check to make sure you're not, you know, making... Let's see, did I get a ding mark? Yeah, there's a ding mark. I see how when I take this and it just falls in place down there, there's a ding mark. There's a serious ding mark there. But I don't okay. think it's going to be enough of a ding mark to get that hole punched through. Because this is just a little bit, it's not that thick. It's only 24 gauge brass. But um, it's, it's, it's dapped a lot. You know, a lot of high and low going on. The way Have your earplugs. Okay. Whack. Whack them all. Now, if I had a nail, it would have gone straight through there and I wouldn't even need the nail file. I would just need, not nail file, I wouldn't even need the hole puncher. I would need a nail file to kind of smooth it out a little bit. That's what I would need. But anyway, let's see. This here, this here is a brand new one. And this is the one we carry at the site, and it comes with an extra um, little nib for when you wear this one out, you can just slide another one in. Okay. okay, hold on. All right, let me. So, yeah, that just, it just found that little place. My hands are not strong. And really, you know, you don't want to, like, force it because you can break these. I've broke them, you know, just... I've going too hard. Going too hard. So what I'll do then is I'll start moving around in there. Sometimes I'll hear click, and I know it went through. Uh, not this time. I'm going to have to ding it again. Or maybe try from this angle. Some things it goes through like butter, but this is not one of them. Ah! Did you hear that? Yes. Did that scare you? A little bit. I didn't break anything. <laughs> And nothing went flying. <laughs> but that's the noise it makes when you get your hole. <laughs> see? That's a bit scary. Do you see that? No, hold on. Can you show the little hole there? Hold it up the other way. Hold it up this way. There you go. Yeah. Right up there. So might want to do, since we a lot of times use 18 gauge jumps, that might be a little skinny for that. So here's what you would do. As you would take like a bead reamer or maybe even an all thing like this and just gently go at it and work it a little bit and you get it bigger. It'll take a little time. This is already getting bigger. And you can open up that hole a little bit more so that your jump will go through it better. So there you are. So you gotta have that because you don't have anything here if you want to make a cuff out of it. Now if you're just making some other kind of thing you may not need a hole there, but I do because I'm going to have to touch it, attach it. I'm going to need a jump here, a jump here, come together with a, another jump, then do my chain, put my 
lobster or whatever class we're gonna put through a big ring there and then put it on. So, but anyway, I'm gonna show you how to bend this thing now. Now, do you use your hands for this one too, or yeah. a tool? No, I don't need a tool. Okay, hands only. You know, years ago, <laughs> years ago, my cat likes to get these um, dish, dish rags and yeah. towels off the end of my little counter here. This like goes around like the it's 1950s. little shelves. 1950s shelves. She likes to get up there and just to tease me, she'll just get up with her and put her little paw like this and all of a sudden she'll spag a few of them, throw them on the floor and run away. Yeah, I saw her on the floor messing with one, but I, I was filming, so I couldn't really take it from her. <laughs> okay, so here's how you do it. Basically the same thing. I always start in the middle, so I find the widest spot. So you can see it, yeah. Back down here so you can see. Dara says that she likes her spring-loaded center punch. I don't have one of those. There probably is one out there. I haven't seen one yet. To Gary get. Lewis. That's Donna, isn't it? Is that another one of her aliases? No, no? that's Christine. Oh, that's Christine. Mm -hmm. Okay. She uses her leather punch or now. Yeah, whatever works. I like my center punch, but like I said, it's in the basement in the workshop. And I was too lazy to run down there. Well, actually not too lazy. I ran out of time to go down there again. That's why I'm improvising using stuff like a kitchen mallet <laughs> and all. And my punch. Actually, if I'd taken the trouble to go down there, people, I would have run it up underneath the drill press and had the end of it. But it's good to know how to do this stuff by hand, too, because sometimes you just don't don't have a drill press around maybe you don't own one yet which if you don't it's a good thing to have you can get them harbor freight and set them up i think i paid 60 dollars for mine i think it was the one harry wood told me to get this is made in china deal but it, it works just fine and robbie took it that's when robbie was still working here and he said, oh, hey, Brenda, a tool, yeah, yeah, because he loves stuff like that. And he took it out of the box, and he got all the old machine oil off of it, and everything got it all cleaned up and got started for me. Went down and got drill bits for it and set it right up. So um, I love it. But you got to be careful. I never use it on video. I will not demonstrate how to do it because the way I do it, a lot of people think is unsafe. But it's the only way I can do it. So I don't demo that because... I did one time and people got upset, so I know. You guys, there are other people that will show you how to use a drill press. I would love to show you how to use mine, but I just don't want to get that flack. And I, I would hate if you did do it my way and got hurt, so uh, no. <laughs> but anyway, I, I use mine a lot. So I'm going to go in the middle again, the widest part. And I'm just going to start bending. This is not going to take long. And I'm just going to move toward the back. Of the piece. Yeah, sorry, Christine. Donna, my Aunt Donna, our lovely Donna, she has lots of aliases, and usually they are guy names. So, <laughs> sorry for confusing you with her. She, Donna's piece of work. She really is. She was going to come today. Yeah, she was. I was she was say, looking was forward she? to it. She's got, well, Javi has COVID. Oh. No. Okay. So Donna got exposed Best, to her. Yeah. So she says, I don't think I should come over there. So I says, no, since I have not had it yet and don't want it, how about you just come next week? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So she will, I, I'm surprised she's not on here with us, though, because normally she would be. She'll probably come say, oh, I miss it. Yeah. She had as a piece that she's working on and she wants to show everybody. Oh. And I said, well, bring it with you when you come and you can do show and tell on the video. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll do that. She cracks me up. She's funny. She's about the funniest person I know. Okay, it's getting there. See, I've got a pretty nice arc. Now, I want to make sure my arc matches on both sides. This one's a little bit. Now, how far are you wanting that one to bend? I want this one. See, this is about done. I want this to Because you don't want to go too far, because otherwise, won't it, like, um, peak kind of a little bit? Well, it like, could, on it, top of your... Like, it'll well, have, it like, could. So, uh, see, do, can you see, guys, how gently mm -hmm. this is just kind of going across my... This is just about done. 
You wouldn't want it to be bent a whole lot more. No, because I'm thinking if you kept going, then you would have space, and it would be kind it, of like it, it, no. So that's why I say the yeah. can. The can seems like a good idea, but it might not be. Maybe I know. I just thought if you got a big can. You know what? I got cans right under here. Let's see something. What about like a like a baby food jar? Oh, uh, I don't know. Try anything you want. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. Oh no, good thing Jordan can't see. Why? <laughs> he freaks out every time he sees this little girl. Why? Because he feels bad for her. He thinks she looks like a little orphan. I'm like, Jordan, she's probably an heiress and a billionaire. <laughs> no, she's a little kitchen girl. I know, but he, he, he always, whenever we go down the aisle, he's like, don't make me go past that little girl. So I didn't know that. Yeah. So actually, a can wouldn't be half bad for this piece. For that piece. Because you're going to oh, get... Oh, for the side of the camp. Yeah, yeah the because camp. you can get a pretty realistic good arc there. So Campbell's. Um, but, like, <laughs> not for this. No. So. Maybe that one, the baby food jar, because it's... <laughs> I don't know. Well, see, now I've got this done already, so. Yeah, you could do that. You could do that. But it might be too round, so you may have to play with it a little bit. I was thinking maybe, like, see, isn't it wonderful to be working in a kitchen? I could just reach down there and get some cans. Yeah, cover up her face. <laughs> Jordan's sake. She's so cute. I know, he freaks out every time. This could be your little Italian cousin. <laughs> my husband's weird. I'm sorry. Don't say that. That's my son. I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm weird too. You could do this, guys. You could do. It's not my way of choice, but you could. You just have to develop your own way. But yeah, yeah. cans. Don't buy a bracelet bender. Cans, people. I would say, you know, save your money for the more expensive things that, you know, you can't improvise, like beautiful beads or something or stampings. You know, we. Kind of hard for us to make our own stampings. Although, um, if you have a, a like a Sizzix machine, if you use really really thin gauge um, copper sheet, you can press pieces out from that. But it doesn't look like this. You're never going to make this. You need professional equipment to do this. So, anyway, so but that's how you do it. I would probably bend this a little bit more. One, another thing you can do is get your um, flat nose pliers and put a little tape around the end so you don't mar the thing and you can just kind of fine tune it with that. And then it doesn't matter that I bent this already. I could still paint this. Okay. So it's no big deal. I was wondering that no if you should deal. paint beforehand or after it's up if to it you. matters. You do what you want. You know, I painted these two ahead of time because I just kind of thought maybe it would be nice to have. So I'm gonna, I think I'll go ahead and bend this so I can see. I don't have a hole on this. Well, even if I, let me see something. Yeah, I could still put a hole in it because I could just push it up like this and get it. Some things you have, it's so bent do you too need, much to be able to. For that one, do you need holes on both ends or do you just need well, to make Well, there are two one? here. Okay. So you just need it on the one yeah, end. Now, if you wanted just a single small hole, you could put it like right in this piece, but you have to be careful that you don't make too big of a hole or it could just blow it out and ruin the stamping, you know, so you don't have a lot, but you don't have a lot of room, you don't have a lot of room up here either. So either way, you gotta be careful. But yeah, I use my fingers, guys, on a countertop and I, I've had good success that way, getting them to fit up just the way I wanted to. But like, if you got some other ideas, go ahead and try them. Just be careful because, you know, the stampings are not cheap and you don't want to ruin them. But these are pretty sturdy. It's not likely that you would. So it honest. seems like that one, it's not like you're really fully bending it. You just want it like a little, like, dapness. Well, I am to bending it. it. I'm definitely bending it. I'm just trying to make a little arc. But, I mean, it's nothing like... You do with this one. This more, one, yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. very slight. It's this more, here, this here, this could use a little bit of an adjustment. The way I'm seeing it, it's not as round in the back as I'd like it. But what I would do again is get my flat nose pliers, or if you so, if you happen to have um, 
pliers for wire hooking, and you have flat nose that have the pads on them. Awesome for doing this. Awesome. I just sold a pair at Etsy. I had an extra pair, and I don't have them on the website. I didn't think I could invest right away. So, um, I just took the extra pair and sold it on Etsy. I can't remember who got it. Somebody in the group did, I think. But we're seeing a lot of new people lately. This morning, I think I had four new people, which is at the website, because our website, you know, we were having all that 404 garbage going on, and uh, so far, so good. I haven't had it for a couple of weeks. I know they've been working on it. Um, but, you know, they can fix it quick. I, I just have to recycle the app is all, but I can't do it. I have to call in and wait for somebody to do it. And blah, blah, blah. In the meantime, customers are like, you yeah, have 404 on there. It's like, yeah, and I'm glad for them to let me know. If you ever see a 404 on the website, please do let me know because I might not have been online for a couple of hours and who knows how long it was there. So please, by all means, tell me. Um, so, you know, this is getting to be about there. I just have to bend it a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty much what I had in mind to tell you today. I'm not going to be able to finish it today. But as far as painting it, I used this thing. I love foam brushes. They're so cheap. You can get them in a craft store. You can get them on Amazon. I mean, I can't believe you. I'm telling you to go elsewhere. I just don't carry foam brushes. So you can get a whole big sack of them and play to your heart's desire. Just, and I just take the paint and I just slather it on there. And then I take another paper and just wipe it off until I like how it looks. And then if I want, I might put another layer of paint over top of that or accent it a little bit. So that's probably something we'll do next week because I think next week in the kitchen we are going to paint flowers and stuff like that. So we've not done that for a while. And you may have seen the picture that I put on, I think it was, I can't remember if it was on the group or the person, my personal page, of all the painted flowers and how I arranged them on a, a necklace crescent was gonna glue them down and all that. That piece sold so fast, it was nuts when I got it done. It was like somebody was waiting for me to get it done. <laughs> and as soon as I put it up for sale, it was gone. But the good news is, we can always make more, and I should, in about a week to 10 days, have a new shipment of raw brass. And I got flowers, so I think next week we want to do a little bit of flower painting to get ready for spring. You know what? Flowers are always popular. They're always. You can always be doing everybody. You have flowers, flowers on today. Yeah, I have flowers. <laughs> on. I always wear flowers. Flowers in her hair. Flowers everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to show you one more thing before I cut out of here because my time's about up, I guess. Can't believe how fast these little sessions go. But anyway, I was gonna show you how I get this in half, okay? So I'm gonna bend it in half. Oh, you mean actually like break it up? Yeah, I'm gonna half? take it, I'm gonna take it apart. Yeah. So I, I start bending it. Now, if I want to, I can get it completely apart this way, but these are better. Red and white shears, we have them back in stock. And you've got a guideline right there. You've got that thing right there. Across Look the at that. dotted. It goes right through that butter. Well, not quite, but close. <laughs> turn around this way. I don't want to get it off kilter and then have a big jag hanging out there to have to file. It looks like maybe I'm headed for that. <laughs> You'll have to file. There it is. See how easy? you got to have these. If you guys don't have these, these are basket shears. And years ago, my friends, Linda and Opie O'Brien, who were mentors to me, they wrote Metal Discovery Workshop, I think it's the name of the book. Don't know if it's in print anymore or not. I love those two guys. They're retired now. And they're consummate artists they just are free and happy and they do whatever art they they did a lot of jewelry and metal art and so i used to go up and see their them in their house um it was right up on lake erie not far side of cleveland and um 
they used to go down and walk the beach in Lake Erie looking for stuff that, you know, washed up because there's that's a really rich place to find sea glass odd things because of all the shipwrecks that happened in Lake oh. Erie over the years and things went down there. So yeah, they used to find a lot of glass and just odd industrial looking things. And so anyway, and then you make jewelry out. Anyway, so now you got this, and this is very rough. So yes, now you need to have your file steel wool, whatever you want to do. I am not worry about doing this with the file in the, you know, big brooch file in the classic way, because you don't have to. A piece of steel wool will take that right off of there so fast. If you want to use a great big, you know, old file, go ahead, but you know, in lieu of using the quadruple aught steel wool, I would probably just use one of those big black paddle nail files from the salon. It'll do it. They look like huge earrings to me. Oh. Like if you did like one like round and then you did that. Like it reminds me of like those Indian brides that get like really decked out. This would be like heavy gold. All the leaves are brown, all the leaves are brown. I heard that some, um, I'm not going to say who because I just don't want to, but anyway, he took California Dreamin' and made it sound like Jimi Hendrix, and it was really good. I've listened to it about five times now. Jordan found it for him. Hey, Mom, look at this. He does it all day long. He get links. Hey, Mom, look at this. Yeah, if you don't care about music, I know you Shut up, Brenda. Tell me about Jordan. Yeah, it reminds me of the Indian brides because they get like they have. Oh really yeah, have you seen those videos of the Indian India brides. from India? Yeah, from the India. fancy who we. They get decked out. And there is a girl I can't remember her name. She gets so many people watch her. So you may know who I'm talking about. And I don't know if she's from India or she's influenced or whatever. She's got all these funky ways of making stuff like that out of plastic. To make it lightweight. And all things like that. And it's really, it kind of reminds me of runway jewelry. Reminds me of runway jewelry because I don't know how much you guys know about runway jewelry. You know, of course you think, oh, well, it's on a model on a runway for a fashion show. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. However, runway jewelry is usually just pasted up stuff. It's, it's usually, when you look at it, it's not part of somebody's jewelry line. It might be indicative of their style, but it's usually hot glue mess. You know, it's just, it's made so it looks good on top underneath. It's not good construction or anything like that. Now hers is, hers is well planned, but all the type of stuff she puts in it reminds me of runway jewelry. You know, like that. So, anyway, so now I got two of these, so now what do I got to do? Well, for me, really quick here, I don't know, what would you guys use? Earrings. Talk, talk to me. <laughs> earrings. She said earrings. I did. Very elaborate earrings. <laughs> like all the Indian brides. Around, all the leaves around. Okay, so, it could be earrings. To me, this is a necklace centerpiece, right? Look at how pretty that she Oh, Dara says she loves those shears. Aren't the they? Scissors. All, they're so good. I think they're. They went up a little bit. They might be sixteen ninety five now. They might be fifteen ninety five. You know everything goes up. They went up very little. They've been about the same price for as long as I've had them. And I've had them for a long time. When Linda and Opie retired, Linda called me and she said, "We want you to do the shears from now on, so we can send our students to you because we're not going to do them anymore." And then they can get them. They can get them. Yeah. Well, no, bring it. So she gave me a resource, and I got them, and I've had them ever since. And I Colleen love them. says the same. She said there's those shears are the best. Yeah. Every every workshop needs them. I like see. What if I did this like up here? Yeah, that's pretty. So if I did that, look at this. Let's just see design thing. Could you use it like you said before? Like, um, what's her face with with the opal? Like, could you? Use it with the big stone? I would have to play with it, but I'm kind of thinking, yeah. It would have to be a decent sized stone. Now, the one that I bought, the one she taught me, taught me, told me to get, Rebecca told me to get, is a little smaller, a little bit more malleable than this. This is a little tough piece. But you know what? If I was going to put, you know, put it way down here, that's nothing wrong with it. But I'm starting to realize 
how that would lay how, really nicely. How effective things are when they're like right up in here. Mm-hmm. And I used to think, well, I can't wear something like that because I had a fat neck. It looked terrible. No, they look they look pretty good like that. So I would maybe make it to hang like that, and then since I'm doing that, I'm feeling like there's space right here. This is like lifting off. It needs to be a little bit of an arc to it. So I would take it and I would. Just press a little just bit. Just press a little bit, make a small, very subtle arc. You can't hardly even see it. And now mm -hmm. it's going to look like it is laying really nice and flat. Mm -hmm. So that's my design tip for the week. You guys got one? Let's it's, hear what you have. I've, I've been looking what they said. I know uh, Lauren has been replying. I'm trying uh -huh. my stuff done. Now, if you have baby wrists, like me, you could probably use well, show them. this half. Cause, okay, so I have baby Little wrists. Little tiny wrists. Little baby wrists. I rarely, rarely ever wear Yeah, a cuff, would, a cuff would be tough on you. So I could use the one half <laughs> yeah. of the cuff. <laughs> yeah, you could. You know what? A lot of people could. A lot of people could do half. To and do you could get the bracelet. two bracelets from one thing. Which is mighty fine. Because those flats now, I think, in raw are 8 dollars okay, so They've gone up. Just so then so. you can see. And I don't even carry this in silver anymore. If somebody wants them, you know, I'd have to weigh them and then call for a current price. And it'd probably be around $25 a piece. Anybody I used else to, have I baby used to have a lady who would do that, but not hmm. lately. Okay, so let me. Okay, so I got a bigger wrist. Let's see what it looks like on me. I want to still work. That would still work. Just, this is another video, guys. This is another video. You got to do that. The only thing I would be concerned about, and you tell me if this would be an issue, yeah. is this part here, when you go to bend your wrist, that it would cut into your hand. You know that. Is there a trick for that? A little bit, the edges, bend it in. That's what I'm thinking. And then, you know, get your steel wool and smooth it. Okay. No, I didn't bend that too good, but. I mean, unless you put it, you like I said, it. with, like, on a leather. I was just thinking, you know, here's another thing. Works real good with this. Moleskin, ultra suede. A piece of ultra suede behind here in a, a nice color that coordinates. It. After you've painted it and gotten it on there, put the, now you can glue that on. You can glue okay. that on. And fabric glue? glue? Um, yeah, fabric glue. Or would you fabric glue. recommend something else? Fab yeah. Would it hold? I would not use hot glue. No, um, would, it, would that hold long enough, like fabric glue? Yeah, you could, use, you could do E6000 too. E6000 is actually excellent on fabric. Okay. They make E6000 that's for fabric, but I don't see any need for it because I used E6000 to decorate clothes back in like the 80s and 90s a lot. And you can wash You'd be it. dazzled. I didn't do it with the tool. <laughs> right. I, everything yeah. was glue and puff paint. You know, and <laughs> oh my word, oh my, I got pictures, so I think there's maybe one in that, in that drawer right over there. I'll have to uh -oh. get it and show you. I don't know, maybe, those are old pitiful pictures, I don't know. Well, let's see what we got there. Let's see. That's old workshop. That's a table full of stuff. Oh, wait, maybe it's not more. there wait, anymore. Let me see. Let's, let's oh, see. here we go. All right, this is Luisa. Here we go. Code. Yeah. This is my model. Okay, so come up on that. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same as this. Come there see us, people. Oh, Jan. Hey, Jan. Hey. Here's all the doilies over the arms, the stuff hanging down. It's all glued on with E6000, and it works just fine. You could put E6000 through the washer. Mom, are you still there? Are you seeing this? Wow. 
Now, do you have you have metal and stuff on there too? Yeah, and uh, acrylic stones. Here's the back. So that's one of those great big '80s coats, you know, that didn't have much shape. Oh, done. I use spray paint on that too. You could probably tell. Uh huh. Yeah. I sold that <clears throat> to a lady at a real fancy store up in the Galleria Mall on Mount Lebanon. She had, it in her, she had it in her window for a long time. She didn't want to sell it. She just had it in her window. They're saying a tassel to uh, hang beads from can, underneath the, the half piece. Yeah, you could do that, definitely. Definitely you could. Yeah. Now, see, that's what everybody wanted then. Everybody saw that. that oh, they'd... They'd stop you. They'd, I, I used to hang out in the back of my booth, and people just like, oh, what is it? Can I put it on? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can put it on. So everybody, I used to make a lot of short jacks. I think I only did a few like this. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, you can see your great big friendly plastic earrings on here too. Those are my friendly plastic earrings. You see them? Yeah. They're probably over there. You can see all the pearls and rhinestones probably, on, the, they're on probably that. Looking at on it. this collar. They're, they're probably just looking at it in horror. I don't see anyone commenting. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're trying to get their fill in first before you know, they say it, anything. It, it, was, it was the time. It was the time. I think anybody that saw something like that now would be like, what is wrong with you? Are you okay? Anyway, yeah, Dara yeah. says that she would add fringe type, like three beaded, like three. Hello, I uh, I am new here at the lines. Well, hi, Ladybug. What's your name? Yeah, can we get your actual name? You know, she must be incognito. <laughs> can you put that back? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, those were the days, my friend. Those were the days. Nice and sure pictures, isn't it? Yeah, I used to do those in uh, the old lunch buckets. I had so many stores around Pittsburgh area, boutiques, that had my lunch buckets in the window. <laughs> I went through a lot of busted jewelry. That was back in the day. What do you want? You want to come in here and show me how you're growing your beard in? Uh, it's not good enough yet. I gotta, you know, show it you you came at a good time. You missed the Giarusa girl. The what? The Giarusa girl. Oh no, not the Giarusa girl. <laughs> Where is she? I put her. You back. put her away. And what, this this little girl. Yes. Yeah. I tell you, every time we go down the aisle, he's like, Lauren, don't make me go down that aisle. Don't make me look yeah, at her. Yeah, this is very sad. You know, this <laughs> this looks like, uh, you know, a, a young orphan girl. But what I didn't realize is she's, she's, she's probably an heiress. She's she's probably an heiress so she's she, probably she was rich. the daughter of uh, the Russes. So the, I don't the, feel so... The, the her, I don't feel so sorry for her now, I guess. I don't know. know. I don't know what GIA means in Italian. I used Everyone, to that's my name. husband. That's Jordan. I knew a girl with that name. <laughs> Anyway, all righty. I'm not fooling around for one day. Did y'all have fun? Hope so. If you didn't, keep it to yourself. Okay, but I, okay, but, uh, I, w I want to put that on leather or suede. Well, knock yourself out. No, for the next video. I think that's what we no, should do. No, I got another plan. But. You said it's a video. It is. You can do it. I've never worked with leather or suede. Well, maybe it's time you did. Oh, Lord. <laughs> the, are you guys ready for another video by Lauren? Because she's not done. Well, I had time. an idea for a possible video, but she's she's she she needs to. I'm I'm missing their comments. You and I are laughing at each other. Oh, they're saying hi to Ladybug. Hi, Brenda. Those shears are the best. Brass yep. flowers, ladies are fabulous. Yes, they are. I agree. I could have used help with my jar of. Salsa. Oh, salsa. <laughs> yeah, here's the trick. said that you could open Let me every tell you what, you know what the trick is? You take a knife. A knife and you whack and it. Just, no, no, don't whack well, it. Well, don't whack it, but I mean, you tap. Like, just yeah. tap, 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 tap. Around tap, the tap, lid. Tap, action. Tap, right. tap, tap. You know, and then if you can't get it open, you do it again. And then you use one of these deals. 
piece of Rubbermaid that you cut out and just take it over the top of the cap and twist it. Joanne said she had the bedazzler. She made blingy t-shirts. I bet she did. I made big messes with puff paint. What is puff paint? Um, it's dimensional paint. You used to be able to buy it and it would puff up and you could put like rhinestones into it and it would, like acrylic ones, and it would just sit down into it and hold them. You should see my face right now, guys, but I'm not going to show it. Well, yeah, that was the 80s. <laughs> Everything was gone. Never and heard of puff paint. And, you know, I, w I would probably never have gotten started with this if I looked at the things I made at that time the way I would now. Like, <laughs> but you know the proof in the pudding oh, is do you have something with what you're doing as if people buy it and I sold a boatload of jewelry I sold an awful lot of those t-shirts and pants I had oh I did shoes mom used to take uh, like clip earrings uh -huh. and she used to put them on her shoes yeah. like as yeah, the yeah, shoe details. yeah. I used to do shoes, a little flat shoes you could buy when they were done. Her and yeah. Dana did it. And my I, aunt. I, I glued flowers all over the tops of them and acrylic. They're I saying, sold more wow, what fun, 80s denim. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's proof I did it. Uh-huh, there's think, proof. I don't think I'm going there again. <laughs> it was fun. All right, I hope you had fun today. I hope you guys got some inspiration for today. I think my big inspiration for today is I'm going to make a necklace out of this. And then hang a little tiny demure or something, something here. A little frippery. But first, I got to go do my video for Friday. I might have to make giant earrings. You're going to make some giant? Oh, there. man. My earrings were as big as brooches, I kid you not. They were huge. Your earrings? The earrings I made back then. <laughs> they were. And I didn't worry. I left big earrings. I didn't worry about it because when people came, to, there weren't a lot of people around here making stuff like that then. So it was a big curiosity. They'd get to my table or my booth, and start, there was always a big log jam there. Everybody wanted to get in there and see that. And I would say about half the people who came to my booth bought stuff. And part of it was because it was curious. And because it was pretty and it was shiny. Ooh, shiny, you know. Um, and partly, too, it was cheap. I, I had earrings from 2 3 $5 a pair. So, I mean, it's like, big why not? You know, and they bought them. But, I mean, they were still buying them when they were 10 12 too. Lady Ladybug says the same thing that she would do a bracelet with it. She would use yeah. a bracelet vendor. Why not? And yeah. um, she said she would do um, connect some stretch or charm toggle, one chain on one end and a double chain on the wider side. Yeah. Debbie says she would wear that today. <laughs> you know, Debbie, if I still owned it, I'd send it to you because. <laughs> You are a child of the 80s, and I know you'd wear it. I know. <laughs> I know I would have walked into a place somewhere, and there'd be Debbie Nicholas wearing that coat. <laughs> you know, with great big earrings. I'll make the great big earrings. Debbie's such a good jewelry maker. She doesn't yes, show she us is. a lot. But I've got. if you guys go <clears throat> to my homepage of my website and scroll down to the Gallery of Inspiration, there are some of Debbie's pieces in there. She's very talented. And mm -hmm. Beans is too. And look, yeah, all, mo uh, all the Dara. There's a beautiful everybody. cuff that Colleen made on there that's pink. <laughs> I don't have that worked up too good yet. We just kind of started doing that, and we did a little bit, and then we got away from it, and then Javi's the one that put it up. It's kind of complicated to do it. you got to make it so it shows up on the front end, then you have to go in the back end and mess around with it. And, and um, she gave me the directions to do it, but I'm afraid... <laughs> So I have to wait. Maybe someday she'll come up here and show me again. She probably will. Or maybe she'll even put a few up for me. She might do that. I'll tell him, Debbie. Yeah. <laughs> so Jordan, go ship my stuff. <laughs> I think he's out there doing that right now, Debbie. <laughs> we, You know, he's got no excuse to be slow shipping stuff now because uh, we don't have that much out there to ship. <laughs> 
Actually, we had um, we did really good this morning. It wasn't a lot of money, but um, I gauge success more in like seeing new people. Even mm -hmm. if they're spending ten fifty. This months. past week we had a good number of There's Etsy a lot orders of new too. people, and then I'm seeing new people coming on here. On YouTube, yep. Which I just makes my heart go pretty bad. And I think it doesn't it doesn't hurt too that I'm on Instagram on Mondays mm -hmm. because there are different people in there. So yep. Not the same, you know. So, anyway, it's fun. It's easy. Um, pretty soon I think I'll be able to put my own self on Instagram. Diane's trying to get it to that point. <laughs> so I gotta go. I got. We want to see. Oh Lillian. goodness! I gotta I was, go. It's, I think everybody's leaving me anyway. I was hey, thinking maybe epoxy and resin, because we haven't had one in a while. Well, we've had a lot of these. I want to see something different. Yeah, this is different. If you do something, I want to see something really different. It's it's a, a complete nature scene made out of epoxy well, and you, using resin. You show me that, and then we'll talk about you doing that. If they're interested, you know. Oh, they love you. They'll look at anything you do. <laughs> Same as me. Anyway. You got that little core people that love you, you know. It's just... They put up with When me. they get tired of you, got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go, I got to go, guys. myself, me and You I. have been wonderful. Thanks for waiting me to get in here. Waiting for me to get in here. Thanks for listening to me yak on. I thought you... I hope you were inspired. I hope you learned something. Uh, you taught me some stuff. And now I'm going to go get straightened out and make my new video, next video. And you will see that on Friday, Friday morning with coffee. And that will be assemblage necklaces, statement ones. Kind of cleaner and more elegant than they've ever been. So, y'all come over and see that. Yins come over and see that.